Today I'm in Oban, a hub for ferry travel to the Scottish Isles, and a place that I thought I knew pretty well, but one thing I didn't know, Oban's got an airport. Now as you'd probably expect, the airport isn't actually located in Oban, it's in a place called North Connell, which is about six miles from here. But the airport's only got one airline, and that airline's only got one aircraft. So that's exactly why I had to come and do this today. So let's go take a look at one of Scotland's smaller airports, and if we get lucky, we might even be able to hop aboard that wee plane. So here we are in Connell, and that's the famous bridge behind us. So if we cross that bridge, we'll go to North Connell, and that's where Oban Airport is. In fact, just across at the other side of the river there, you've got the end of the runway. On my way over the bridge, I could see that you can walk over it as well, so we're just going back for a wee look. In typical Steve style, I've arrived at the airport super early, but the terminal's closed. It might just open for flights, but it's more like a bus stop. When I did eventually get into the terminal building, I was pleasantly surprised it's got everything you'd expect from a bustling international airport. They've got a check-in desk, restaurant facilities with a fridge full of chocolate, which I approve of by the way, and plenty of places to spend your money including airport merchandise and a proper first class lounge with apron views. Better still, they've got no problem with you just wandering airside, an absolute dream for an enthusiast like me. Hebridean Air Services fly to the islands and today I'll be going to call and back. And it's on one of their Friday afternoon scholar flights, which is aptly named as this Britain Norman Islander does look a bit like an old school bus. Gulf Delic about zero, orbit information, start boost, runway in use, zero one, surface wind, zero one zero one three knots, Q and H one zero two two, basic service. And it sounds a bit like my van when it starts up. So as we get ready to board now, I'll keep quiet and let you enjoy all the sights and sounds of a takeoff from Oban Airport.
window. I couldn't even find these flights on Flight Radar 24 to give you a look at the route, but it starts with crossing the edge of Lismore and some small islands I couldn't even identify. The majority of your time in the air though will be spent crossing the Isle of Mull. As we fly up the sound of Mull, that's still the mainland we can see off the starboard wing. I found filming pretty difficult in this tight bumpy space, and this screen didn't help much so sorry if the footage is less than perfect. I wonder if it's possible to sit right up front in more normal times. I've flown to Cole's neighbouring island Tyree before from Glasgow, and of course that route's a bit longer and therefore it's more interesting to fly, but Mull is still a pretty cool island to cross over at low altitude. I'm ashamed to say I haven't set foot on this island in over 25 years, so when we do eventually make it to Mull again, this beach at Calgary Bay will be high on the list of places to visit. As we started our shallow descent into the Isle of Col, you could really see how flat this island is, and those Atlantic winds must just sweep over the top without much resistance. The final sweeping turn in towards the airport really shows off some of the landscapes and colours the West Coast Islands are famous for. Here's a wee tip if you fancy filming one of these flights for yourself. That little mount on the dashboard, that's for a GoPro, and the pilot will generally let you use it. Unfortunately, I brought the screw mount rather than the slidey one, so maybe next time. As we taxied into the airport, you could be forgiven for thinking this shed is just a garage or something. But no, this is the terminal building. Probably the smallest I've ever seen.
So welcome to Col. It's a bit windy here. We've got about 15 minutes and then it's back on board and back to Oban. Like I say, time was a wee bit limited on call today and it's a lovely island but I spent most of my time checking out the plane. I did have just about enough time to stretch the legs though and then it was time for the return flight to Oban on a slightly emptier flight having dropped off the school pupils. I managed to bag the back seat of the bus for the return journey and I was allowed to keep the seat in front of me folded down for a slightly more comfortable experience. I had only the cargo hold behind me and nice big windows as we retraced our steps back to the mainland. mind me filming bits of the return flight as well. For me this is one of the real joys of these short 20 minute hops. The fact that you barely leave the ground at all. It makes the view out the window so different from a regular flight, especially in weather like today as we stayed below the cloud cover pretty much the whole way back. And as we passed over the higher ground, it really felt like you could reach out and almost touch it. way back the weather started to close in quite a bit and the ride became quite bumpy but overall it feels like a safe aircraft. My focus was on trying to keep the camera still anyway. When the bridge at Connell finally came into view again, we were only a sharp left turn away from the end of the flight. As I gracefully stumble out of the back seat, it's time to say thanks so much for joining me today and for making it all the way to the end of the video. My camera and I, we managed to delete my proper summary, but I can conclude this is a great way to get flying again, without all the normal faff of an airport experience. No passports, no security line, I can't even recall showing my ticket. It's just proper flying, low over some stunning scenery. Thanks again, see you soon.